Hello and welcome to the Aftershock. We're joining you live after the match between the San Jose Earthquakes and the Colorado Rapids with Alex Morgan and Jamin Moore. I'm Philip Leva. 3-0, another goalless outing for the Earthquakes tonight. A disappointing result. Uh, John Fisher was in the house. If folks didn't catch it, I don't know if the if it was going out on social media, but he was here. He was sitting in the stadium, in the crowd. He got to see it for himself, how badly this team was playing. Um, before I go any further with that, Alex, I'm going to kick it over to you first. What are your initial thoughts? Yeah, I actually, I, the trailer for this season finally makes sense to me now. You know, it's a series of historic moments in Earthquakes history. And this season is finally feeling historic in that the Quakes are on track for their worst ever season in Major League Soccer history by almost every metric. They have three points in their first eight games. That's basically on track for 11 points this season, the worst season in Major League Soccer history. They've allowed 20 goals in eight games. That's on track for 84 goals allowed, which would be their worst ever season in MLS. One of, I think, the worst ever uh, defensive performance in, in Major League Soccer history. Uh, their goal differential is equally bad. This team is really, really bad, and it feels like they know that they're really, really bad and that the wheels are coming off the bus right now as we speak. And I, at this point, don't think there's any other way to change that other than pretty significant changes uh, to the roster, investment in a new number 10, to the coaching staff, getting a new coach to give this team a different look. And then you can go all the way up to the, you know, the general manager position, getting a general manager who's going to build this team differently and, and getting a, you know, a, a new owner who's going to uh, bring the in investment required. I, I, I think this is kind of like a crisis moment that the Quakes find themselves in it, it, at this point. A 3-0 loss at home to the Colorado Rapids is a, a, a low point. I, I can't remember the last time, uh, you know, it felt this bad to be an earthquakes fan. Yeah. A humiliating loss and not really surprising though. That's the thing. Jamin, uh, let's hear your initial thoughts after this match. I'm certainly not where Alex is at uh, because all the metrics say that this team is not a bad team. They'd say it's not a good team. They say it should be somewhere in the middle. And largely what, what that is, is the soccer that is played in between the goals that the San Jose Earthquakes concede. Between those goals, they do fine. They, uh, they have, you know, decent possession. They have dangerous possession at times. They're creating better chances at this point in the season than they were at this point in the season last season. The problem is that they are giving up almost twice as many goals as they should be. That is the biggest problem. It's back to all the problems that these fans, that this team experienced under Matias Almeida and without the goofy tactics to go along with it. This time, it's just capitulation. It's breakdowns in the worst possible moments. They have a lead. They concede a goal. They're playing at home in front of their fans with an opportunity to be able to get points in front of a home crowd outside of Seattle. They've lost all the other home games by two or more goals, including tonight, as Alex mentioned. 3-0 to Colorado is enough to fire a lot of coaches in this league, particularly when mm. it's at home. So I don't think that the, the players are not MLS-level players. I think that the players that they have are perfectly fine for the league. The fact that they have a positive expected goal differential in even game state, meaning that when the game is tied, they actually uh, have three more expected goals than their opponents, which the problem is when the game is not tied. The problem is when they have a lead and they concede it, and then they concede another goal immediately after that. Or the problem is mm. tonight, they concede the early goal and they've already kind of thrown in the towel. And that second goal is just going to come at some point when everything starts to fall apart. You'll get your chance, Alex. It's my turn now. Chill. So this is where we're at right now is we have a team that is expecting the next shoe to drop every single time they step onto the field. And as soon as the first shoe drops, the second one drops pretty darn quickly. 
and it's PTSD. Like every time they step out on a soccer field, they're just expecting bad things to happen, and then they do. That's where it's at. Right. Um, Alex, I do want to give you a moment. Jamin, if you could, as we're transitioning here into some of our analysis, if you can pull up some of the contributions that folks have made tonight, we do want to oh, acknowledge absolutely. those. Yeah, as well. we had our, and I do, our biggest. I do want to talk right? about the defensive performance. Yeah, we, we have some, yeah, some pretty um, well, nice contributions here. We've tonight. had our biggest, uh, two biggest contributions that we've had have come in one right after the other. And the first from Jesus Fernandez Is this a crisis? Should we be concerned? How do we get out of this situation? Love the show, guys. I think we're going to be talking about these things all night long, Jesus. Uh, very, thank you very much for the for the donation. Thank you for your $50 contribution. Yep. And uh, also to uh, Darth is in here with 50 as well. I've been following this team since 2010. And uh, he's got a, a crying, laughing poop emoji. crying face, a la the, the, the laughing crying face and a, a poop emoji. And Brian Hoovler, yeah. who's been very consistent with his donations every week. He said, I'm sorry, I like Lucci, but I can't do this anymore. We're officially un-Gucci. Now it's time to make a change. And yeah, they might be getting to that point. Absolutely. Just like we talked last week, they might be getting to the point where that change is required. And we're going to get into all the fans' thoughts and uh, Phil, like, you know, I'll give you a chance to, to give your opening remarks Absolutely. here too. But, but I definitely want to get into what the fans are feeling tonight. No, for sure. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned the last game because, as you all know, I wasn't here on the aftershock. I wasn't able to actually watch the game uh, because I was at a wedding at, out in the Central Valley. But I did watch the highlights. And here's one thing I noticed about this team and the way they set up defensively. And I noticed this tonight. And you notice, I noticed it on the first goal. I was talking to Robert about this, actually, who will be joining us later in the show, Robert Jonas. Um, and I was picking up on the fact that the team was really struggling when Colorado was pressing them. They, they struggle to get out of the press. And oftentimes what we see happen is they put themselves in these situations where the defensive players have to make a pass out of their defensive third. And rather than, you know, just do something like the no nonsense type of clearance, which you often see with teams, uh, which oftentimes leads into a change of possession. However, uh, what we're often seeing here with the Quakes is they're just losing the possession in that part of the field. Um, this is consistently happening. We saw it tonight on the first goal, right? We saw the, the turnover in their defensive third, which led to Georgi Mihalovic sending in a pass, ended up leading to that goal. Uh, we saw this in the previous match, whether it was just clearing out balls from set pieces. Um, when the other, when the opposing team gets an opportunity and they're attacking part of the field, the Quakes don't do enough to to uh, get them to reset or to try another angle in their attack. Um, and Quakes, the, the Quakes have been really poor at preventing the opposing teams from quickly turning those opportunities into something. So on the one hand, the Quakes, um, as you mentioned, Jamin, they have been dangerous at times this season, but they're not capitalizing on those opportunities, right? Uh, we saw the crossbar hit a couple times tonight. We saw Pellegrino curl in a, a ball that was fairly close, right, after he made a really – a really great play on the ball to get into the 18 yard box. But the problem is in addition to the quakes, not finishing those opportunities, they're making so many defensive mistakes, like boneheaded mistakes, right? When you can just send the ball out of your part of the field where the team can, you know, create opportunities, they're overthinking it. They're overthinking everything. Like every, every time that they could just clear the ball, they pass around as we saw tonight, they give the ball away and they allow the other team to create opportunities. So right now, like, I think one of the biggest changes, and this is obvious, right? Look at the stat line. They've just given up so many goals this season, but there has to be a change of mentality when it comes to how the team approaches these defensive clearances. Alex. Yeah, I think that's right, Phil. I think the quakes are in perpetual crisis. I think that the way the team is funded and operated by John Fisher kind of leaves them in that position. Um, but I think we've reached the point where this is also now an acute crisis. And I think the the key thing that distinguishes that is that I don't think this team believes anymore in themselves. It, it, it doesn't feel like they have the, you know, the strength and the confidence and the mental fortitude on the field uh, in order to get any results, in order to win games, you know, regardless of what they feel like in training session of you know how how happy they are when they're doing their rondos 
or you know how fired up Lucci is when he's giving the the you know the pregame speech on the field they're not showing that and their actions speak louder than their words and so that's the reason why I think uh it's an acute crisis is that I just don't see any future for this team right now I I don't know what they stand for I don't know what they represent maybe other than like the the misery and apathy of billionaire owners who don't really care about the team or the community. Um, and I, I don't know where it's going. I just, I don't know where it's going right now. And it feels like they need a paradigm shift and it feels like the only way to get a paradigm shift is to get in. How, a new as a fan to know that, I mean, look, John Fisher was in the house tonight. He was sitting like what would be uh, at the halfway line. You know, one of the better seats in the house and one of the front rows. I, I won't say exactly which section it was, but he's sitting there. He's watching the match. He's got his buddies with him. Um, this is a guy who, if you're an A's fan, you already know this is this is a really big problem, right? He he talks at this press conference in, in Sacramento as the A's are going to be moving there for the next three years as they're building their new stadium in Las Vegas. And one of the things that he says at this at this press conference you know where I'm going with it. One of the things that he says at this press conference is he's excited for the A's to play in the most intimate stadium in Major League Baseball so that he can see players like Aaron Judge, who doesn't play for the Oakland Athletics, by the way, hit home runs at that ballpark in Sacramento. Now, what we have here, like I'm, I'm here live at PayPal Park. We have an intimate setting for a, a sports venue. You have a team that has a massive amount of potential in terms of the number of fans that you have, uh, people who follow the team, people who follow on social media. Um, you have everything that you need here. And the amount of investment that it takes for a team like uh, the San Jose Earthquakes relative to Major League Baseball teams is like minuscule, right? He's sitting in the stands here tonight and he watches this game like, what could he possibly be thinking when your team is losing three to zero? He stayed until at least the 90th minute. I saw him out there. Like what is running through his mind when you, when your team at a stadium that is half full is underperforming against a team like the Colorado Rapids, who are not expected to come in and just like completely thrash you? You know, I, I'm just at a loss for words. Like what could you possibly be thinking? Like just sell the team. Like it, it's something has something has to change here with this ownership like it is embarrassing that he came here to watch his team lose three to zero and he's just like all right peace that's it yeah i mean i think oakland a's fans have been experiencing this for over a decade now so uh i i i think that they have it a lot worse than earthquakes fans do but i feel like that's a big matter of time Alex. A big matter warning of time. sign because that feels like it's the direction that this club is heading in right it's my 10th season covering the team now and i'm not only talking about this season when i say that i can't envision a future for this team i'm talking about the next five years and the next 10 years i literally can't envision a future for this team in which they are having a winning season and in which they are going to be a competitor in major league soccer i just can't you, make it work I, in I was, my head I was just with what up and the down reality at the stadium, like before the game, I'm walking up. And this stadium is 10 years old, right? It's, it's been around for a bit. It's not an old stadium, right? We're not talking like, you know, the old White Hart Lane before they built the new one for Tottenham and they have this like beautiful new thing. And, you know, you go back there and it's like crumbling and all that. Go walk up and down the stairs here at PayPal Park. There is already like cracks, rust. I mean, it is not like the the, the best place to come and see a match. And like, Look, I know I just said that John Fisher has like a great opportunity here, an intimate setting, but they're like, if you look at the stadium, it's in the same disrepair that the team is in. It's like an exact like it, example of, of how things are going for the squad. You know, like it, it's just it's just a massive embarrassment right now. Like everything is bad. The stadium is it, it's, it looks like it's falling apart. It still looks bare bones, right? They didn't do all the things they said they were going to do. They're not adding the additional 6,000 seats. They're not putting up the, the thing to make it uh, look prettier around the side. I mean, it's all bare bones. Look at it. This is an embarrassment. I, I mean, like this I, side just, of Phil. I don't think I've seen this side of Phil before. I, I like well, this side what? of Phil. I'm, I'm this energy more often. Happening, though. You know, it's like, Look, if you're an East Bay sports fan, it is like the worst time right now. We lost the Warriors. We lost the Raiders. We're losing the A's. Like, all the rest of our teams suck. The Cal Bears suck. The San Jose Earthquakes, our soccer team down in the South Bay, sucks. It's just a terrible situation. 
<laughs> and just brush. I think it's because right you're not paying the players enough, you know, at, at, at for the Cal Bears. So that that's the issue there. You, you need you need you need to you need to pay better. Hey, they certainly pay the, look. Your by the way, team. I work at UC Berkeley. I'm a, I am an employee of the university. That's where I work. I will tell you those. The coaching staff, those people make so much more money than any professor makes at that university. I'll tell you that. Right. It's like tenfold. It's like so much more. So, look, I know that's a Your different conversation. Your fans want to make sure that they get you heard here, too. University payroll, man. Like, you're really going to get me fired up. Oh, thank and, you and actually, for adding that in, Christopher. The Sharks are also awful. Worst team in the NHL. I mean, what I, do we have, I, I think that's if you're slightly not say, What do we have? I, I think that might be a slightly different situation, Phil, because I actually feel bad. For everyone in the earthquakes front office and oh, on yeah, the team for sure. and in the coaching staff, I actively feel not, bad for them because what, me, what's what's Eugene Gonzalez supposed to do? What's what's Christian Espinosa right. supposed to do? What is Chris Leach right. supposed to do when they're repeatedly denied the resources that they need to succeed? I feel like the strategy in the last three four years, yes, there's been a pivot, and the pivot has been to kind of gain those marginal improvements and try to optimize all the small things. I think that's where the data analytics picture comes in is how can we do the least amount possible, invest the least amount of money into this team and maximize the returns. And the problem is that's premised on the fact that you're investing the least amount that you possibly can. When in reality, and Colin and I, I think did a wonderful job explaining this on the show, you need a surplus. You need a surplus in order for the team to succeed. You need to be willing to spend money on deals that might not necessarily work out because you know that the more you spend, the, the you know, the, the, or, or at least the, the kind of not necessarily just on, you know, big money contracts, but the, the more you right. invest in the TAM level deals, when you fill your U22 spots, when you fill your DP spots, the more deals you get across the line like that. The, the more successes you're going to have. And the Quakes aren't willing to do that. So it feels like the strategy is premised on the fact that they're always going to be in the bottom half of the table and they're going to be. Yeah, you you got to take risks, Alex. You got to take some risks, right? Not everything is going to work out. It's not, not every single signing is going to be perfect, right? Some well, risks. We're going to Nico Chakiris in the press conference now. Apologies, we are having trouble with the sound. Uh, yeah, we got I, no audio. I'm going to try to share again. Uh, I'm not sure what okay. the problem is. Cool. It might be on there, end, Jamin, because we do have the audio going on our end. Just so you know. If you're able to share, Phil, go ahead. Um, yeah. Um, actually, I don't have the presser up, uh, so you're going to have to pull it up from your end unless Alex has it. And I realize right now everybody yeah, is hearing this comment. I think it's getting fixed. You guys can hear what it. goes on behind the curtain. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. You know, we're looking at those moments. There we go. Got it now? Hey. Yep. All right, we're ready. This is your first 90 minutes back for a while. Um, uh, there was a lot of stuff made, but you were which I think, you know, was a, a kind of uh, an attempt to, to stay positive and stay attacking in this game. How do you feel uh, physically, and how do you think that you did uh, with the a two man midfield instead of the three? Yeah, I mean, it's good to get, you know, 90 minutes again and a full match. Um, you know, and I feel like my, my fitness is coming back, which is good, and I'm happy about that. Um, and, yeah, and, you know, we were chasing the game, and 
know, changes were made and you know, I stayed on the field and, um, you know, I take that as a positive and, um, you know, I feel like, uh, yeah, like I said, it's good for me to get my fitness back and, you know, help the team. Away from home, how do you feel to connect with your fans again? With your two games coming up, we have Galaxy Nashville. How are you going to adjust for those games? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's never easy playing on the road. Um, you know, and I think we felt that this year. But, um, yeah, I really feel like being at home, it helps. Um, you know, the result didn't go our way tonight, but, you know, I feel like we had better chances, better moments than we have in the past two matches. And, um, yeah, like I said before, previously, you know, we're just looking to build off, off of the moments that we created tonight. Uh, we're going to go to a couple of questions first online. Turn with Alex Morgan, Quakes at the center. Hey, Nico. I uh, appreciate you uh, joining tonight. Um, you know, I, I, I want to ask about where you think the team goes from here with, you know, one win uh, out of these first eight games, um, where you think the, the spark could come from to, to turn it around, where you guys have been looking to try to, to get that spark, and if it feels like it's right around the corner or if it feels like you guys still got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I feel like, you know, we, we created a few moments tonight where, you know, we've been looking to to build off of and the the combinations in the final third i think is something that we wanted to build off of and you know i think we we saw that tonight um and we just didn't put away our chances and um yeah you know it it's hard it's hard right now but listen we're looking to fight back and we're looking to get our three points which i think is big right now for us and, and the momentum of the team um so in terms of a spark i think it's just the collective of coming together and and fighting for our three points. One more question uh, online from uh, Jamin Moore, and then we'll go back to Michael. Unmuted. Hey, Nico, good to talk to you tonight. Um, you know, it obviously a poor result tonight. Um, defensively, giving up three goals, you guys have given up multiple goals in each game, and, and you're primarily an attacking player, but defending defending's everyone's responsibility, pressing's everyone's responsibility. What's the biggest difference right now in the mentality that the team had last year uh, and the mentality this year from a defensive perspective? It just feels like, you know, these moments, there's breakdowns that didn't really happen in the same way last year. Defensively, you guys are pretty solid all year long, and uh, that's just not the case right now. So, you know, what, what's your perspective on that? Thanks. Sure. Yeah, and, you know, I think we've given – uh, more goals away than, than we would have liked um, at the start of the year. But listen, I don't think our mentality has changed at all. Um, you know, we're still fighting for three points every match, and, and that's our main focus and our main goal uh, each and every week and each and every day is, is to get those three points on the weekend. Um, and, yeah, right now I don't feel like the mentality of the group has changed. Um, obviously a rough start to the year, but I think week in and week out we're still looking to get our three points and, and turn this thing around. Yeah, so with Carlos Brisbane on the starting lineup, that's one clear defensive midfielder out of the equation. Instead, you're working with Jackson Ewell and uh, Alfredo Morales, who's still uh, relatively new to the team from New York City. What was it like working with them in this midfield trio? Um, yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, the experience, I think, is, is good. You know, I'm a young player, and you have Alfredo with the experience, Jackson, Grezo. You know, I think we all complement each other. Um, and yeah, we're still looking at, to build off of, of each other and, and combine with each other and uh, build that connection with one another. Um, and I think, you know, that takes time, it takes time and it'll, it all come together. We have one last question from Jeff White. Considering how it started the season, how do you, how do you find, what's the mentality like in the locker room right now? Just how you guys would have it because it's so easy. Game matches in one way and everyone's kind of seeing the streaks. Like, how do you kind of keep everything even keel positive right now? What's that atmosphere like? Yeah, I mean, like you said, not to start to the year that we wanted, that we were looking for. Um, but like I said before, like, listen, we're we're looking to build moments. We're looking to find a moment um, to turn this thing around. And, you know, we made a comment today of it doesn't happen in a day. It doesn't happen um, in one action. It takes time. and we know that 
Um, and like I like I've said before, I think we're just looking for those three points to turn this thing around in, in a moment for for the group to to build momentum again and and get a rhythm and where we're getting points. This concludes this portion of the press conference. We'll be joined shortly by head coach Lucy Gonzalez. Thank you. Thanks again. Look, you got to give it to Nico for coming out, answering questions from the media. I, I, you know, look, he's he's 18 years old. There's a lot on his shoulders right now. I know a lot of folks are probably saying, well, it doesn't matter. He's a professional. He's an adult. Look, he's he's having to come out and answer questions for something that he doesn't have any control over, right? So anyway, Alex, it looks like you want to yeah, say sure. Why is Nico Shakiris the player doing that press conference? I'm sorry. That that to me is absolutely bizarre. He's an 18-year-old. He's you know, in his first season as a starter in Major League Soccer, by all accounts, he's playing well. Why is he the one who has to answer for a 3-0 loss like that? That makes me so incredibly angry, and it shows me that there is zero leadership in that locker room right now. If there's a yeah. captain in there, if there are players who are willing to take accountability, they are the ones who have to answer for a performance like that. Nico Shakira should not be the one taking the heat for a performance like that. That makes me so incredibly frustrated because we saw what happens with Cade Cowell, who actually I think was very candid and honest and vulnerable with us when he talked about the pressure that he had to face on his shoulders as an 18-year-old, as a 19-year-old, uh, playing for a bad team, going through rough patches himself having to, you know, have the pressure on him like that. I have absolutely no idea why Nico Shakiris is the one doing that. And honestly, it, it makes me feel a little sick inside because that is an 18 year old right there who is having to answer for a room full of grown men who aren't doing their jobs and for an, like an organization full of adults who are not like setting him up to succeed. So, I mean, that just, I, I don't know whose decision that was, but Honestly, Dante's right here. Jackson Ewell should be the first guy up in that press conference, and behind him should be all the other veterans who need to mm -hmm. be taking accountability for this performance. I, I cannot believe that Luchin Gonzalez and the rest of the locker room let that happen. Uh, how about the substance here, Jamin? you have any thoughts in regard to some of the comments that Nico made during the press conference? I mean, what can you say? Um, yeah, I don't think we got, you know, a ton – you know, out of, out of hearing about it, uh, you know, he kept talking about that they feel that they have the ability, the confidence to be able to go out and get three points. But it's hard to it's hard to 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 say that. But what else is he going to say? Right. And, right. and again, to Alex's point, he's 18. I think the reason, uh, you know, just to try to be a little bit fair to people here, I think the reason he's out there is probably because he was asked by PR because he was considered to be the best player on the field tonight for the San Jose Earthquakes, and they like to take the player who had the best performance and have them have a moment to be able to to talk, you know, to the press. It's considered a uh, kind of a bit of an award for 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 that, and so I think that's why it happened. I agree with Alex; it might have been the wrong night to do it, but yeah. I, I think that I think that's why. It's no, never been you, you're it's right never right. been an award though. It's always been the guy who is most comfortable going and taking the heat, like Tommy Thompson or Shea Salinas or Chris Wandelowski, the guy who Chris can take the edge off. Right. I've, I've never seen it really as an award. Used, that, Maybe I mean, when they I remember so many nights, Alex, that they ran Shea Salinas out and he sat on the bench for for 80 minutes. So it, there's no rhyme or reason to it. Well, I mean, where do we go from here, guys? We can talk a little bit of the the goals that were scored. We can talk, you know, some of the other woes that the earthquakes are experiencing. But honestly, I feel like we're repeating ourselves at this point. Alex, it looks like you might want to say something. What, what do you think? Well, okay. That I, I want to set ourselves up for the Lucci press conference because, okay, um, you know, I I want to ask Lucci what kind of pressure he feels on on his job right now and his position right now because seven losses in the first eight games is a fireable offense one and two because it's worse than that actually if you go back to the end of last season they were winless in their last six games of last season they lost that that that's including the the playoff game that they lost so it's been 14 competitive games that Luchi Gonzalez has coached this team for and they've had one win that is half a season of regular you know season games and they've had one win uh and I I, I did, don't think that's good enough for him to keep his job as a second season coach. Now he's had the time he's gotten in the players that he wants. Uh, I, I just, I, I no longer see what the argument is, what the, the compelling case is for him to keep his job. I understand that. Yeah. The problems run a lot deeper than him, 
Uh, that's the answer to the question because <laughs> the problems run yes, deeper. Yes, out. that's not a good problem. Problem. Always run deeper. It's not adding value. So I, I, I want to toss it back to yeah. Jamie to see if if you've changed your position on this since since last week. If a three 0 loss at home against the Rapids is enough to move you in any direction? No. Uh, so so you know people are people you know got got kind of upset at my comments and look they can they can take them however they like. Um, the uh, you know that uh, you know I was I was talking about about uh, you know the metrics and such and that the players are good enough. You know why? Because people around MLS talk to me and they say your roster is good enough. You should be better than this. What is going on? They ask me that and they don't put it on the players. They do not think that San Jose has a subpar roster. They think it's a roster that should be able to compete. So right now, the only thing you can say is that the coach is not getting out of the players what they need. Or you can say the mentality of the players has been broken, you know, due to the situations that they have capitulated in. It's 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 one or the other at this point. You can't you can't or just it's, it's you can't say you can't say, oh, we're going to change the owner because you can't change the owner. The owner's not going right. to change. OK, you can't say you can you know, it's the GM's fault because the GM again, as Colin and I has pointed out many times, has actually hit way more than the average GM in this league in terms of the players that he's been able to bring to the roster that have been able to, and, and, and the performances that these players have been able to, to, to have over time. And the metrics on the players say that for the most part, most of the players are good enough to be in this league and so you can disagree with me all you want to, but you're watching one team and I'm watching uh, however many teams are in the league now. What is it, 30 or whatever it is? So I'm right. watching all the teams in the league. I'm watching all the games. I'm looking at all the metrics across all the teams and I'm seeing a different story. So you can disagree with me if you like, but it's- well, it sounds like the problem is still Lucci. I get that the roster might know that it sounds like- I'm thinking of Lucci the, 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 Yep, press conference is starting. Understanding game moments and reading that moment was that's not the start we want. We want to build pressure on them, but they were on us. And how can we turn their back line? How can we push them back and maybe play direct earlier? Because there wasn't a lot of space to play through them. So maybe we have to look to play over them. And we didn't read that in, in the early. So it was a poor start. Still, there's plenty of game to play. Um, we usually start quite, quite strong, um, but it was a poor start. Probably shook us, but then we got in on the ball. We got into the game. I thought we had a good passing rhythm. We started to create, started to create uh, our volume in the attack and our press after loss and play more in their half. I was very confident in the group that we were going to tie the game. I half. I, I felt even until minute 47 before the, I don't know if you remember 45, 46, 47 before the half. I mean, we were generating cross after cross and attack after attack, but <clears throat> it didn't happen. So. Really, the message was keep doing what, how we keep playing the way we finished the half, uh, keep creating, keep getting building pressure on them. Uh, and one goal changes the game, you know? And I, till even down 3 0 to, to the 95th, 96th minute, I believe we were going to score. I wouldn't have celebrated that goal, but I would have, I would have, you know, I didn't see the guys give up at any moment. I didn't feel or see the team give up or individuals give up. I saw them uh, work through the frustration of being down one zero two zero three zero because of key moment mistakes, you know, PK in transition, we give a PK in a transition and we don't break their, break their press. <clears throat> set, set piece, right. Where it kind of deflected. It was kind of unlucky. Like Rodri is usually pretty good at clearing those. He kind of mistimes it. It, it hits like this heel it deflects. We had great numbers in the box to deal with it. It's a chip. 
and it, it bounced, it trickled in, but they found a way we didn't. And then the, the last goal was, you know, we're committing in a 3-5-2. We've got pretty attacking minded. One center back, two full backs, uh, which we've generated attack and probably should have had at least a goal when it was 2-1, but 3-0, there you go. You know, a situation we actually win the ball, we, we don't play out or we don't play forward and, and they get it back and Cole Bassett scores. So, you know, I think there's got to be more moments where we're, we're winning key duels um, that, that change the game because, I mean, I'm looking at stats and I'm like, nobody wants to hear this. I don't want to hear it, but <laughs> but the stats are there. 20 plus shots, almost half, more than double their shots. Um, you know, XG is like, it's tough because XG, you got to get the shot off. You got to get the shot on frame. You got to get, you know, Rodri not missing that, the redirection on top of the six early in the game could have, he actually shoots it on frame or gets the contact. It's an, it's an XG, but that's the, those are the margins. You know, we, we didn't find a way to put our shots, create more danger with our shots and, and score them. And they did. And three zero doesn't reflect the stats, but three zero reflect what they did effectively, and we did not. Um, and we're, you know, we're we're not proud of that. You know, we we, we it's not a good feeling at, in our home stadium in front of our fans, in front of our family. You know, it's it's not a it's not a, a good feeling. But we didn't give up. We didn't give up. Um, I think that's a concern if you see a team just kind of just stop working and not like we didn't give up. We didn't give up. I didn't see for a second we give up. Can we win more duels in key moments? Yes. Can we have some maybe savvy in the, if they're building pressure to get it in their half where we don't have to connect five passes in our near our box? Yeah, we can we can read the game better as, as a group. Um and we gotta we gotta keep working. We have some young players, we have some the guys that came in that that, that, that they were unlucky not to get a goal, but what do we do? Feel sorry for ourselves, you know? Doesn't feel good. Wake up tomorrow, take on the next moment, the next day. Keep working. We keep working. I think things can bounce our way. Just gotta keep working. We get knocked down seven times, we're gonna get up eight, and that's that's the group I know. And that's what we're gonna try to do. We're gonna try to do our best at the next moment, being ready for the next moment. This question, Jeff, why is it your puppy the sports? Um I know people look at the results and people are going to say that it's massive and it's not, but you call it a night like tonight in a way unlucky because of all the chances you had. Last year, you know, you had a chance. Mm -hmm. First half, you're right in front of goal, and I said, now they had a shot. That went just wide. You know, you know, it's definitely mm -hmm. made Drake saying it's mm -hmm. Eagle almost had a shot late. And then, in a way, and in a way, this un un unlucky night, like you would have on some nights. Yeah, I think some of our language in the last few weeks was like, oh, well, we have expect this expected goal average. We have this expected goal against average game state, like when we're tied versus when we're winning. Like it was a clear, you know, um, I would say um, the, the difference between when we're tied, we were, we're a top team in game state, expected goals and difference of expected goals against. But then like, when we're winning, all of a sudden we're not creating as much and we're not defending as well. So, so that's something that we want to. We didn't we didn't show present the players XG different number. We just in the way we talked and approached training and and how our mentality moving forward and our goals moving our, our next moment. Um, it was about that. Like, let's score. Our attitude to score two three goals, be very aggressive in the attack, but also our attitude is. When we have a goal like we did in austin or two like keep keep being aggressive keep playing keep trying to get on the ball don't hide get on the ball that should build our confidence not bring it down with fear of like letting go like there's something we got to keep working on mentally with the group and ourselves is that that fear of failure that fear of oh no we're down or oh no the momentum shifting and we have to but to find a way to flip that switch mentally and that's that's work let's continue to work because it will bounce we will create our luck we will create better luck um where pele shot goes in or or alfredo morales's header goes in and we get the rebound but 
you know, got to keep working. Is it duels? Is it just individual duels? I can't sit there and say our tactics are just, no, I, I feel like our approach to the game, uh, the, to each game has been uh, logical and, and to set us up for success. But, you know, we got to, we got to execute it collectively and we got to be um, better in the individual moments that make the difference, whether the stats show it or not. Hey, Coach, uh, you talked about for a couple of weeks now about the group needing to like understand key moments better, whether that be like the momentum changing, a bad rep call, mm -hmm. or like the opening 10 minutes of this game. Um, as a coach, how can you like help the group yeah. work on that? The guys know, know the game really well. We have really smart technical players with experience. And yeah, we have young guys, but they play. I mean, Nico plays like a veteran, his savvy and his. I mean, he plays with a lot of courage. And so, and so, yeah, look, it's, it's not that they don't know what to do in the key moments. They know, but when there's, when there's a tempo and speed and pressure and pressure of the, the game, like the moment pressure of the opponent, like just everything, this tempo speed, you got to do, you got to make a split second decision individually in a collective way. Like, yeah, there's 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 breakdowns and i think it's it's about building confidence to know that we have we know the solutions so how can we um decide better over a 90 plus minute game with confidence and with it's almost weird because you you saw them play free and when it's three zero from combine create for you know it's a, it's an attractive uh it's it's there's joy i i wouldn't have celebrated the third goal because we we're we we're in its game state that if it was a tying goal or winning goal i would i mean, I, would, I loved a lot of the moments we play with creativity but um gotta gotta find the way to balance like no fear courage and like build our confidence confidence is built with first take ownership we gotta be critical we're gonna review this and not not be happy with the breakdowns right we gotta take ownership and then move forward and act act in the next moment keep working and i think confidence will bounce our way these things will bounce the, bo the boys way but we gotta we can't get stuck on staring at the table or talk about playoffs it's not about that at this point it's about let's have let's fucking get better on training tuesday sorry for cursing but let's bring it tuesday let's compete tuesday and let's let's go to la galaxy and, and do something that no one expects us to do. Marco Ikelovic, you guys were chasing the game, and you mentioned it went on to about 10 minute mark. But you guys did respond with chances, but the, the fact that they not, did not go in, was there any sense of deflation at the end mm -hmm. of the first half going into that second half? What, what was your message to them? Yeah, look, we're human beings, and and when the shot doesn't go in, you even see my response on the sideline, like, oh, you know, like, should have scored that could have would have loved to score that but we gotta we gotta go we gotta keep going we gotta keep going we gotta, um that's the game you know um we gotta create another shot create a better shot so <clears throat> that's a human reaction to to be maybe disappointed you don't score and the guys you know Pella is the first one to say i should have scored today coach i'm disappointed with that but i know that we know and it's easier said than done but um you know, that's, that's the game we play, man. And yeah, we got to be more clinical and it's just building confidence, all connected to the confidence. And if we keep working and we keep staying together, which I know they would, these guys will, which is a really good group. Uh, the confidence will come, it will come with work and togetherness and, and, and that's it. Uh, takes. What challenges does it give you when you go from one game where you lose four three to Austin and then you can't generate as much offense at home and then you have a different situation to kind of piece together after this game against Colorado? Every game has a different story. Um, goals bounced our way uh, against Austin. Uh, unfortunately, we, we, we conceded in – uh, three goals in less than six, seven minutes, which was a huge momentum shift, and they were super efficient. I mean, we've we've had some interesting goals against us with like long range shots, deflections that 
don't have high XG, but they, they found a way to go in. So we, we have to close it down quicker and block it and not allow the shot. Like we got to take it a next, another level. If low XG goals are going in against us, like let's not even allow that, that shot to even happen. Right. So that's, that's the standard we got to set for ourselves. And look, uh, um, it's, we're very disappointed with this result at home. Uh, if someone didn't watch the game, you know, there's going to be a judgment about it, which is fair. And we have to be take responsibility for that. Not everybody can watch our games or, or you know, that's, it is what it is. So that's the score line. That's take accountability, but also know that the guys didn't give up. We didn't give up. We pushed to the end. I thought we, they took their chances and we didn't. And that's it. Don't, let's not overthink it. We're not going to change all everything and go the opposite direction with our tactics and change a bunch of our training methodology and the personnel. Like, no, we're going to take just take the next step and make some adjustments and, and hope that they work next. Thank you. We're next going to go to a couple of questions online. First one's from Alex Morgan, Quick Step Center. Hey, Lucci. Uh, appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, you know, you may you may think the framing here is is unfair, and I get that. But uh, if you take the the last you know five games of the regular season last season, you combine them with these first eight, you got one win in thirteen games. Uh, and so I'm wondering, you know, with that in mind, the the kind of pressure you're feeling on on your position, uh, and whether it's a thing like oh you know, we need a few wins here in the next two, three games, or I'm going to start getting calls from ownership. Or if it's, we're going to have time, we're going to get in, you know, the new number 10 that we've been talking about, and we got a few months to figure this out. Yeah, there's there's not going to be anyone that's going to put more pressure on me than myself. You know, uh, I'm, I'm pretty intense. If you know me personally, I take a lot of pride. Uh, I want to, I want to, First and foremost, uh, be you know, work really hard. Be uh, be a good person. Be a good father. Be a good husband. Um, be a good brother. You know, I want to be a good friend. I want to be. I want to show and represent the values that I think are really important in this club and this team. Um, and I pride myself in leading, right, and and coaching. And so, you know, I'm not happy with maybe the the record, but I'm not looking at the last 13 games. I'm not looking at the last two games. I'm not looking at the last 100 games. I'm just trying to learn and get better. I'm developing, you know, I'm trying to get better. I have, I've had a lot of amazing experiences that I'm very blessed with and thankful for. And uh, I'm going to work really hard and, and adapt and be really excited and, and intense and uh, to, to attack attack the next opportunity the next moment that's all i know you know and so i'm going to keep doing that i can't get caught thinking about my job or i mean last year leading up to the playoffs you know there's jobs on the line i have peers that have come in and out of the league and uh chris armis had a great game tonight with colorado and he 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 was not in the league then he was in europe then he, you know like this is this is we know we know what we signed up for the risk of it um, and the sacrifices that our family make, uh, but I'm I'm looking forward to continue to learn and get better and, and and be ready in the next moment and if that means a win in the next game or a streak or not a like you know that's I can't control those things but I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna keep learning and I want to keep getting better. Um, and I know the players are uh, players are the same. So this is a process, you know. This is this is a project, right? Like we made a lot of changes in the off season um, that I that I'm very confident are for the best. You have like a Bruno Wilson. I know he's injured, but he's going to be really important on our back line for this season. Peter's coming back from an injury, and we have great depth at fullback with him, Paul, and and Macapo. But we got to they got to do better. We got to do better. Um, Pele is, has goals in him. He needs to figure out the league, the, the club. We got to support him to do that. 
and I, and I, and I, we got guys that are young and I think have great potential like Benji, Jack, Nico. So, you know, I, I look forward to this group getting better and, and things bouncing our way. Um, but it's a, it's a process. This project needs time, needs development. And this is a low moment of it, but yeah. Okay. We can talk about a DP talk about U20, we can talk about those things, but they, they're not going to help us today, but there's plans for those. There's planning and and hopefully progress in those areas is when, when, when it's meant to be. But, but I'm going to, I'm going to think about what's next, not what, and for me, what that I control, I can't control what an owner decides. I can't control what other things, other factors are, but I'm going to be ready to, to respond with what I can control. We have one more question online from James Moore, Quakeside Center. We'll Unmuted. Hey, Lucy. Uh, I want to go back to the beginning of the game. Um, yeah. Like they presented some, maybe some surprises for your back line that you weren't expecting. Some of the off the ball runs they were doing. It felt like uh, the back line was surprised. They were caught high in some situations. And, uh, and then to give up a penalty, you know, early on like that, it, 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 it was, it came after wave after wave of early pressure. That seems to be a theme this season of like, uh, you know, buckling under collective pressure uh, in some of these moments, less 1v1 situations like maybe it was last season and more collective uh, breakdowns uh, this year. You know, how do you get back to the type of, you know, defense, defensive solidity that you had last season? How do you get that confidence back from a defensive side? to not buckle in those pressure moments and be able to, you know, keep these games tight and have your opportunity to, to, to take the lead and keep it. Thanks. Muted. Yeah. The first goal came from us winning the ball and then losing it and then creating the PK. So, you know, there's, <clears throat> and then, yeah, they, they were effective. They were vertical early making wing progression runs, playing those. And we, we'd make those ourselves, but we didn't, we didn't defend them early. Great. Um, but that's not why we conceded. We conceded on a PK that came from a foul right after we had possession and they got it back and they created a, a moment in our box. So yeah, look, the, the collective defending is, is something that we work every week uh, on and not just attacking, but we have to keep being ready defensively. And to me, the, the collective is, um, it's tough because is it more important to work on the collective or is it more important to, improve the individual we have to do both we have to do both um mentality the opportunity is there to, to definitely improve defensively you know we're not gonna we're not gonna go like i said make every training monday through friday next week all about defending 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 certain you know because we want to defend with the ball possession and attacking which we can create and generate we didn't reward ourselves tonight doing that but Let's, let's be a, let's keep things simple. I will say this like individual duels, attacking and defending duels. We keep in, if we improve that, then the collective will improve. And then things will get, but things, results can bounce your way. So the duels are going to be important. You know, we got to keep stressing and improving duels, taking more pride in our one on one duels. Um, it's my job as a coach, figure out how to trigger that and get the best out of the group in that way. So, you know, we, we got to keep working to do that. Question from Paula Marube. English or Spanish? Your English, Spanish. Spanish? Spanish. Okay. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo está Luchi? La pregunta que tengo es, hablemos de Nico. ¿Cómo se está adaptando otra vez al equipo? Estuvo lesionado y su esfuerzo, sobre todo esta noche. La pregunta, dos que tengo. Después que estuvieron ustedes dos uh, juegos fuera de casa, regresan acá, ¿Cómo ayuda al equipo a nivel psicológico, energético, recargar las baterías para irse con los equipos muy importantes como mm. Dallas y Nacho? Gracias. Sí, eh, estamos de viaje un par de semanas. En casa, afortunadamente, no, no tomamos ventaja de jugar en casa ahora, esta noche. Y ahora vamos de viaje dos veces más. Y las cosas no se ponen más fácil, se ponen más difícil. Y, pero nosotros sabemos que está diciendo que esas cosas ponen más difíciles nosotros ser fuertes ser fuertes ser unidos seguir trabajando y teniendo fe y eso nos va a mejorar 
no puedo dar garantía del próximo resultado, pero qué lindo oportunidad de jugar contra Galaxy en, en Galaxy. Un equipo que nos ganó acá en nuestro propio, propio estado, estadio. Es un partido muy importante para nuestros fanáticos, nuestra comunidad, nuestro club, la historia de los, los clubes, la, la rivalidad. Y vamos, vamos por ese partido. Ese partido es un final. Un final y queremos eh, cambiar el curso de, y la dirección con ese partido. Con Nico, eh, no, Nico And, está progresando bien. Regresó de su lesión. Tiene ahora ritmo. Está jugando con mucha positividad de que el partido progresa y el juego progresa para frente con la pelota. Nico que tiene mucho coraje para jugar. Está aprendiendo, está aprendiendo. El mismo vez me encanta su mentalidad, su habilidad y él va a seguir ahí tratando de ayudar a este equipo y va a seguir creciendo. One last question uh, from El Mundo, Max Cordaro. He asks, ¿cuánto afecta lo mental para que el equipo no termine de soltarse? Okay. How In, in English, you know, the, the, keeping the mentality, keeping the mentality solid, uh, so that uh, yeah. how to keep the motivation. How to keep the motivation. What, what do you mean by suelta? Yeah. What, do you, what do you mean by suelta? Soltarse. He said, I guess more like. Uh, yeah, I was talking about. I, you know, I was talking about confidence before, and that yeah. just they can play more loose and oh, calm, confident. Okay. No, la confianza es fa es, es fácil decir confianza. No es fácil crecer la confianza y expresar confianza, enseñar confianza. Es, la confianza viene de ser responsable y crítico del de momento, de, de lo que acabamos de tener la experiencia, pero también mover para frente y poner energía, acción en el próximo momento. Y con eso, con tiempo, con tiempo, con tiempo, puede ser otra pérdida, puede ser empate, puede ser ganar, pero con tiempo la confianza se gana, se mejora con esas cosas, esas cosas básicas, básicas, no sobre analizar, no cambiar todo en 180 grados, en hacer lo contrario, no, seguimos trabajando de nuestra manera, porque nos ayudó mucho el año pasado, como hemos progresado, saber que tenemos jugadores nuevos, que todavía estamos integrando, y dar, dar a ellos la confianza, tener fe en ellos, y hablar así, enseñar eso, y, y con eso, con tiempo, la confianza crezca y las cosas, la suerte se mejora. This concludes our post game press conference. Uh, with head coach Luchi Gonzalez, thank you all for attending. Good, Good night, night, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that okay. went a little longer than we uh, so I, I do want to introduce Mark Goodman, the soccer rabbi. This is somebody who covers the Colorado Rapids. Mark. Uh, Mark. <laughs> What's up, Jay Moore, baby? <laughs> yeah, you know, we've, we've had him on the show a couple times, and I uh, I told yeah, him, I yeah, said, uh, really you need funny. to stop by and say hi to everyone on the live show. And uh, you're here. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, Mark, um, tell us a bit about your experience here at PayPal Park, and also let us know about uh, your the extent of your coverage with the Colorado Rapids. How's, yeah. how's that going for you? Yeah, so the walk from, um, from Amtrak Caltrain, not great. Uh, it's basically vacant lots uh, and construction sites yeah. and not a lot of vibes. Um, but then you come into this beautiful, glimmering, fantastic stadium of yours, you know, steep break. You know, if you don't, uh, if, if, if you look down too quickly, you will fall right over and that's bad. And you won't stop. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> and I think, um, but there's a lot of, you know, the, the, the food trucks that you got going, the Jumbotron is really lovely, but we were talking before a little bit bare bones. You know, I was at, um, Columbus last year and Cincinnati the year before that for away games. And those are new stadiums and they're really fancy and they put in a lot of the money. And so you guys caught kind of like the brand new stadium without all of the bells and whistles and they got all the bells and whistles, but you know, you should be really proud of what's being built here. And hopefully Luchi Gonzalez is building a team going forward and, and getting you guys out of the cellar of the league. Yeah. So, uh, again, Tell us a bit about the show that you have and where can folks find you? Uh, Holding the High Line is a podcast and Substack. Uh, it is me and 
uh, Matt Pollard, who also runs the former SB Nation site that uh, went defunct and is now kind of independent, which we call Burgundy Wave. So Matt's been covering the Rapids for about seven years, and I've been covering the Rapids for nine years. So we've turned into those old guys in the press box where everyone goes, what was it like covering Major League Soccer in the old days? And I say, I remember when, <laughs> you know, so I remember Chris Wondolowski. Do y'all remember Chris? And they'll be like, no, I don't know who that is. So it's been really, it's it's we a lot of fun. It yeah. So nice. <laughs> um, it's really great covering the Colorado Rapids in this season. The last two seasons have been awful. We were at the bottom of the league. So, um, it, you know, hopefully things are looking up for us. Uh, cool. So, yeah, uh, I, I do most of the writing for our Substack, stack um, and I'm kind of the sidekick on the podcast. And it's been it's been a blast. I've also been really the metrics and tactics nerd amongst the Colorado Rapids intelligentsia. So I knew XG before XG was cool, baby. <laughs> I heard that thrown around a lot tonight. Nobody wants hey, to hear um, XG tonight. Uh, just so yeah, you know, I'm not, 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 <laughs> very yeah. tired of it right now. No, we will not. Hey, um, let me ask you, what what do you think of the match? Like, what, what are your thoughts regarding the outcome? Obviously, it went in your favor, 3-0. But just your general thoughts about the match before we go back to our conversation about the press conference, you guys. Uh, Mark kind of wanted to get your take on that. Yeah, so Chris Armas came over from uh, New York Red Bull. And Red Bull was, of course, famous for high press. And Armas, you know, I, I think that he hasn't been pressing uh, as much as we expected him to. Um, but of course, the first goal came off of a high pressure situation, which uh, it did not seem like San Jose responded very well to. So they look a little bit shaky at the back. Ironically, of course, the goalkeeper, William Yarborough, immediately came from the Colorado Rapids. So we've seen Yarborough. Yeah. Um, he's usually more reliable in situations like this, but it was the back line, I think, that let you down on the first goal. The Rapids haven't been in a position where they were in a driver's seat from an early position since May 31st of last year. So that was an interesting moment to see how the reaction was. I thought San Jose that, really you know, that feels bad for Quakes fans. Just want to just yeah, want to shout sorry. that out. That's that's rubbing salt in the wounds a little bit, I think, for some of our I don't audience. mean to. I don't mean to. I just tell I call it like I see it. No, the th the thing that was impressive for San Jose is that there were moments in the game where, you know, hitting the crossbar multiple times, there was a lot of kind of potential there. Um, uh, Pellegrino looked really impressive uh, in, in spots. His little kind of round the cow slash sombrero move, and then he tried to curl it in about the 21st. Didn't quite work out, but Look who's here. there was a lot of potential there. And, and I, I think the, the, the Rapids kind of, and then the second half was just kind of like, like kind of like there's not a lot of energy past minute 65 from um, San Jose, and, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, all Mark. Right. Well, uh, we got Robert. Mark. You oh, heard my uh, my question probably for for Lucci there. It sounded like you were you're hanging out with Phil for most of that. You know, I felt that the thing that I noticed about the Rapids today that I didn't see in the previous couple seasons was their ability to push kind of push numbers forward and and make the defense have to make some sort of decisions early on in the game. I felt that that goal was coming, whether it came through the run of play, whether it came through a penalty. You guys were putting the Quakes defense under pressure, you know, very early with those kinds of runs. Do you was that a tactic that you know you think was devised for the weaknesses of the Earthquakes back line, or is that something you've been seeing as a uh, as a pattern that Armis has been able to put into this team to to give that confidence to go on the road and make that kind of aggressive push forward, you know, early in a game like this? I, I thought that was a very I, I think it caught I think it caught Lucci and the Quakes by surprise. I really do. My perspective, I guess, is that the Rapids have been going wide a lot. They like to run down both channels on the or both kind of like uh, uh, lines on the on the edge and force teams to react to them, and then that creates space underneath often. So they have been doing a bit of that. The one thing that I think I noticed this game is the Rapids favor the right side in previous games. This game, they went down the left a little bit more, and I think that that created a, a few problems. I think the, the one thing that the Rapids have yet to really do a lot of is use Georgi Mihailovic um, underneath and kind of coming through. Um, what they've really been focused on is the second runner. So getting wide 
getting into the box and then Cole Bassett kind of showing up late and doing things. So um, that kind of pressure has been building throughout the year. Um, Rafael Navajo, our striker, uh, also got a goal from the run of play for the first time in his Rapids career. Um, he's been a penalty kick guy up till now. So that was a, a nice development. Um, you know, there was a little bit of floppage. There was some falling down that worked in our favor. Um, and then the early yellow cards against you guys. So I think there was a lot of like the Rapids getting into good positions early that made things difficult for San Jose. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I want to bring Robert into the conversation. Thanks for, uh, for joining us tonight, Robert Jonas. I okay, you were just at the press conference right now. We actually, um, because we are past the hour mark, we want to kind of head towards the final thought segment of the show. But I know that you're very good at that anyway. So, um, if you want to share some of your thoughts regarding the match and what you heard in the press conference tonight, and then we'll go to the rest of the guys as we round out the show. Yeah. And what I'll do is you all heard the press conference, you kind of saw, you know, heard what was said. I think the, uh, you know, kind of connecting that to some of the chatter that was going on in between the press conference and just in the hallway was 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 really about, and the coach sort of succinctly said it, he, he felt the team did a lot of things right and that they weren't rewarded for what they did right. And, but I, what I also heard and what I was putting together with that is, and what kind of why I asked the question I, and my follow-up should have been, okay, you know, what are you going to do is, is actually, can you do, you know, can you put these things together? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Lucci multiple times tonight was focusing on du duels as one of the statistics he feels the team can improve on. And, you know, that's a step in the direction perhaps to, to connecting and getting, you know, making these moments mean something in the collective. Um, but I still worry that, you know, the team, if they can do that still, and, and I think that's the follow-up that, you know, I want to ask or I want to investigate more about, you know, some of the fellows seem confident that, you know, walked out heads up. They didn't seem, you know, like upset about the loss, not happy about it either, but felt that they did a lot of things right tonight. But you can do a lot of things right and hope you win and you'll be a bottom of the table team in MLS. You know, you have to be, you have to be able to do mm -hmm. these things and you, you, and if you can't do that on a consistent basis and, you know, you know, there's this is going to be a real long season in San Jose. So that was a little bit of what I was hearing. Um, I think Lucci, after the cameras went off, was a, a little little less pleased in, in what he talked about uh, just briefly about, you know, this team needs to to rally. This team needs to to find their 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 collective, you know, you know, collectiveness. I'm going to use that word, you know, and and because that's not there yet. And. You know, you can say it's young guys. You can say it's guys that are new to the team. You can say they, that are guys that are still integrating. But you can't say that for much longer. You know, and that's true for every team in this league. And if Colorado can come in and mix things up in 10 minutes and completely throw the Quakes off their off their game, and every other team around the league is just salivating at the idea that they can do the same, and it's just going to put this team under so much more pressure than, than they even saw tonight. All right. Well, I want to bring Alex Morgan back into the conversation here. Alex, your final thoughts before we close out the show. Yeah, I think I'm on a different wavelength. I think this was a 3-0 loss at home against a Western Conference rival that they expected themselves to be able to beat. Uh, and I don't think there's any positives to take away from that. I think we're eight games into the season now, and it's far too late to be grasping at straws. And Honestly, I wish that Luchi Gonzalez had had uh, had owned up to that in the press conference. I, I think at some point, uh, you know, there's only so much analysis you can do and you kind of have to push the team to where it needs to be. And you have to be willing to take accountability and and, you know, keep it short and uh, and simple and, and admit that this is not nearly good enough and that they need to have a huge shift in order to get to where they they realistically need to be. And and look, I I, I feel bad for him. I, I empathize with him. I don't like asking him hard questions like that about the pressure that he feels on his job. But at any other club in Major League Soccer, at any other club in world soccer, that question would have been, you know, started to get asked two, three weeks ago, you know, after four losses to start the season after you know one win in six in six games even last season after they went winless in their last five games of the season i feel like we're we're way past the point now where it's it's time to start asking those 
those difficult questions. Uh, and and you know, I I I actually don't really see why Lucci is holding back because uh, I can understand for the earthquakes. Yeah, it's nice to have a coach who is going to go and try to put a little bow on you know whatever pile of schlop the fans have to watch each week. Uh, but for Lucci Gonzalez himself, he is a young coach. He is coming from you know a World Cup in which I think the U.S. did quite well as a part of that coaching squad. Uh, he has aspirations to continue to be a coach in Major League Soccer, and I think it's a bad look for him if he is willing to come up week after week and you know kind of try to put a positive spin on performances that clearly aren't good enough. I don't see what he's getting out of that as far as his coaching career goes. I think it would be a stronger position for him to say, I am not personally willing to accept this level of performance and this needs to be better from everyone all around the board. And I'm going to hold myself accountable to that. And we're going to deliver on these DPs that we're talking about and on the U22s that we're talking about. And if that doesn't happen very, very soon, you know, that's not something that I'm personally am going to accept. I, I, I would have liked to have heard that from him tonight. I think that's the point of the season that the earthquakes are in right now. And, and it was weird that there was that disconnect to me. All right, Jamin Moore, final thoughts following a 3-0 loss at home to the Colorado Rapids. Yeah, I, I, I still see things a, a bit differently. I, you know, I don't think that it's realistic to expect Luigi to come out and address the players that he doesn't have, he has to address the players that he does have. So first off, I want to say thank you to Dante here uh, for the donation, $1.99. At least we get to see the Quakes play Chivas. Yes, of the things that there is to look forward to still in this season, you could say Open Cup we see and the opportunity to play Chivas and League's yeah. Cup are, are two of those things. Um, but but this team this team has to has to address, there's something going on in the mentality of when you get down that you can't get back into the game, that once you get down, you're going to give up another goal and another goal. Once you give up that first goal, the second one's always going to come. Why? Because it has in every game so far, this team has to get back to the collective mentality. They had defensively last season. They're not showing this season. They have to be able to work as a unit, understand their role, understand where each other player is, and they need to bring back defensive solidity. The problem with this team is not in the attack. Fans focus on the attack. There's a lot of comments about the attack tonight. And yes, in a game where you got zero goals, that's going to be a focus. But guess what? There was four 0-0 games in, in MLS tonight. So 0-0 games happen. If you play solid defensively, you're going to walk out with a point. They continue to not play solid defensively. I'm sure Mark could tell us that of all the reasons that you know the, the team spent the last couple of years in the cellar of the Western Conference, a lot of it had to do with capitulating in key situations defensively. And that has a knock-on effect to everything else that you do. And now the earthquakes are in this situation. So they can decide collectively, we're going to solve this. We are going to come together as a team. We're going to work together as a back line. We're going to put ourselves in a position to support each other in the right situations, or they're not. They're going to be individuals. They're going to be for each other. They're going to be looking for their next contract. They're going to be looking for whatever the next thing is for them personally, and they're not going to come together. And so we'll see which one happens. But right now, my concern is that we're starting to see the latter of it. And, and Jamin, I just want to shout out that the next three games are against LA Galaxy, one of the best teams in the league, demolished the Quakes earlier this season, then Nashville, who are one of the better teams in the Eastern Conference, and then LAFC, who are LAFC, and then the Rapids away, who they just lost to, 3-0. So if you're looking at those next four games, I think it's a stretch to imagine that they're getting more than three or four points out of those four games. And so I think these issues are only going to continue to compound themselves. We said after last week's show, this game was really key because the schedule ahead of them is going to get harder. And they failed that test. And that's a huge problem going forward. Yeah, I just want to point out in a real goal situation, everyone's sick and tired of talking XG, perfectly fine. In a real goal situation, this team is scoring more than they did last season. And they're scoring enough to be able to get better outcomes than they are. The attack is not the problem. It's completely on the defensive side. So while Lucci's like, yeah, we're not going to focus all of our time on defense, 
honestly fix that because the attack is good enough to get results and it you know the rest of it's just not delivering right now all right mark you have any final thoughts before we get on out of here i was just thrilled to be here it's uh, i recommend to everybody out there all you uh viewers and listeners that uh taking an mls road trip is one of the best things you could do in your life um just it, it everything feels more intense and, and richer and uh, even when they don't bring you on a podcast or a TV show afterwards and and let you pontificate about how the Colorado Rapids have turned it around from being the second to worst team in the Western Conference to being one of the better teams. Um, it's a it's a fantastic experience. So um, but I'd like to thank you guys for for having me on. This is a hoot. Yeah, it's nice for being a friend you. of the show. Great to great to see you tonight, Mark. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have you back on the Aftershock. Um, the last thing I wanted to say before we get on out of here is, look, one thing that we didn't talk about enough today, but we've talked about a lot during the season is that one thing that doesn't show up on paper and that's leadership. It's quantifiable by by sight and how it affects the game, but it's not always going to show uh, on the stat sheet necessarily. Um, I mean, oftentimes it does show up with the final score line. It hasn't been good for the earthquakes. They're one seven and zero this season. And I think a large part of that is because they are lacking leadership. That's that's one of the biggest problems. I mean, ever since Wondolowski went out, that flame went out with the team and nobody has picked it up and reignited it. Um, and we love Jackson Yule and what he brings for the, to the team, but that's just not one aspect of his game that measures up to what Wando brought to this team. And I just think until they get that figured out, this is going to be a continuing problem. They're not going to show that fight on the pitch that is missing for this team. We can talk stats all we want. We can talk XG all we want. But if they're not getting somebody to marshal them and carry them on their shoulders, they're not going to put the ball in the back of the net. And I think that's really one of the biggest problems with this team right now. So I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Make sure you check out quakesepicenter.com. Uh, Dante, thank you again. Yeah, another donation from Dante. Thank you, Dante. Uh, He's Dante's ready with his Colorado jersey. jersey for the game, uh, the League's Cup game against Chivas uh, coming up soon. So um, thank you again for your donation, but make sure you check out quicksepicenter.com. Check out our Patreon for a couple bucks a month. You can get early access to the press conference videos, the articles uh, written by our wonderful writers like Jamin and Alex and Robert and Colin Etnire. And uh, for just $5 a month, you get access to our Slack as well. You can join the conversation throughout the week during the match. It's a lot of fun. So make sure you check that out at quicksepicenter.com. There's also a QR code there, the bottom right of the screen. If you are following along on a laptop or a device where you can scan it with your phone's camera, then you can get it there as well. So make sure you follow us on social media, on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, at Quakes Epicenter. And we look forward to having you join us after the next match against the LA Galaxy on the road. We will see you then. Thanks for joining us tonight. Have a good night, everyone.